Our guest in this segment is also from the Berkeley County School System. They're going to be pretty busy in the next uh, couple of days here as school opens up very soon. Jason Kamlowski is our guest, and uh, Jason is in charge of making sure that all of those positions that need filled get filled. So Jason, as I said, he's a very busy man this time of year. Jason, come a little closer to your mic. And good morning to you. Thanks so, so much for coming in. Good morning. Appreciate you guys having me uh, having me on to talk a little bit about some of the jobs we have open and, and some of the good things we have going on in Berkeley County. Yeah. What, what's your official title with the school system? So officially, I am the Director of Professional Staffing in the Office of Human Resources. Um, we are a department of nine. Dr. Mm -hmm. Justin Schooley is our uh, assistant superintendent. He is in charge of everybody uh, in our department. And then Karen Hensel is our Director of Service Personnel. She handles aides and bus drivers and custodians and secretaries and things like that and then um, we also have Susan Cookus who handles certification uh, Lauren Garrett who helps me out tremendously with the onboarding of new professional staff we got Debbie Walker uh, and Amanda Stickles who handle our, our benefits mm -hmm. uh, Lidora Wakpara who is our um, recruiting coordinator and then um, the two probably most important people are Michelle Brock and Teresa Keys they are our administrative assistants in the department but they are the ones that keep us going every day and who are you looking to hire at this time so right now what we're, i'll start with the professional side um, right now what we're looking at is and, and our principals i've really got to tip my cap to them they've done a wonderful job excuse um, me a second jason before for clarification professional means what yeah good question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so on the professional side what we're looking at um is classroom teachers uh, and then other positions as well but the the jobs i'm here to focus on today are mostly the classroom teachers because that right now is the priority for us we do have some openings um, with, with some other positions that would be maybe a, a coordinator um, you know we do have an elementary school specialist position that's posted that's going to work with our k-5 teachers on um, you know academic achievements and and we have a couple itinerant um, pre-k teachers that we have open that'll that'll help in our pre-k special needs classrooms but on the professional side that's when when we speak about that we're talking about classroom teachers um, so right now we have uh, you're talking about aids as well or just aids would be on the service side okay. Okay. and and i do have some information on the aids as well okay. karen was able okay. to give me some information okay. there too but that, yeah that's a good okay. question just for, for people listening um but like i said tip my cap to the principals they've really bridged the gap the last couple of weeks um to to find people um, we are down to nine classroom teacher openings right now in the entire school system in the entire school system yes i'm very proud of that uh, we have posted over 500 positions this summer, you know, starting April 1st. And um, so, you know, we there's a lot of movement, as you might imagine, in our school district, um, you know, with us being in the area that we're in. Mm -hmm. But we're down to nine classroom teacher positions. Um, Jason, how does that compare to last year, year before, whatever? I would say very similar. Uh, I think last year at this time we were, we were around um, the same place. I believe we, you know, the heading into the what I would say the first day with students last year, I think we had seven openings total so in a very similar spot to where we were last week and or last year and i think this week uh you know we have some leads on some people mm -hmm. so i do believe that that we can get that number down um you know i talked to some principals yesterday about a couple positions i know we have uh, a couple offers out to potential candidates that you know that we're hoping will accept those so um you know, hoping, uh, you know, in a perfect world, my goal is to get it down to zero, of course. And uh, starting this year, how many new teachers will we have throughout the school system? And of those new teachers, how many are first-time teachers? So we had, uh, we did new employee orientation last week, and we had 141 um, new people there. Okay. Um, which is uh, quite the increase from what it was. If you go back to around um, the, I'm going to say COVID years, you know, that number dipped below 100 a couple of mm -hmm. times. So we have seen, you know, an uptick in, you know, new people wanting to um, come to Berkeley County. Um, we also have seen some people who have come back to Berkeley County. Is a new person a recently graduated college student or is a new person someone who taught for 10 years in another school district and now is teaching in Berkeley County? Both. So when I say a new employee, I mean someone who is new to our district. Yes. Um, and, and it's exciting to see, and, and we've had quite a few Berkeley County Schools graduates come back as well, which we always love to see. Um, but to, to be in that room last week and, and see all of the new professional staff that we hired in there, um, there was a really good vibe. The buzz was really strong. Dr. Sachs was in there. Um, you know, he introduced senior staff. And you know, there, there's a lot of excitement, I think, in the school district. And, and, I, and I think if you would talk to people, you would see um, what I would say the pendulum maybe swinging back 
to where we're not going to be, you know, in a position where we're, we're, we're having so many vacancies that maybe we had around those COVID years. Mm -hmm. I do think we're starting to see an uptick in those types of things. And we're in much better shape than we were maybe three or four years ago. So Jason, you say um, that you had an excess of 500 positions. I'm sure I'm assuming that's professional and non-professional. Um, and you've had pretty much that same last year. So is this, is, I, and I know some of these positions leaving that you're having to fill are probably from retirement, uh, people hitting those retirement ages and, and they want to be able to retire. Um, are you retaining these people that were hired last year? So is these 500 new people or what percentage of these people were hired last year and didn't, didn't make through the year and, so a lot of times when I talk postings, anytime, even when a, when a teacher maybe transfers from one school to another, that creates a job posting. So I should probably clarify the 500 number. That doesn't mean that we needed 500, you know, brand new positions. Okay. Um, you know, the 141 number is probably closer to what the positions that we actually needed that, that, you know, people vacated for one reason or another. Um, but then there were also some positions that get created. I mean, just yesterday we had to add um, a fourth grade teacher position at a school because you know, of new student enrollment. And, and those things happen quite a bit, as you might imagine, with, with the growth that we're experiencing. Um, you know, the addition of classroom teachers is something that happens every year. So it's, it's not that we have 500 people that have left us. Um, and when I talked to the principals last week, you know, we, we met with them at the opening principals meeting. I do think the focus is shifting more towards retention um, because, you know, we are putting um, a lot of effort into professional development, teacher training, you know, we have we have academic mentors for our, for our teachers, um, you know, and, and really what we're trying to do in Berkeley County is is create a culture where people want to work here um, and, and they want to make this their their home, really. Um, you know, and I think in a perfect world, you know, we would have these people. You know, I know my mom taught for you know 30 some odd years uh, in the same school district. And, you know, in a perfect world, we would have these 30 year veteran teachers that come to us. And, you know, we, we get them at the ground level and we build them up and we train them and, and you know, they kind of call Berkeley County home. So that's kind of what I think the shift is, is probably going to be for us is more towards, hey, you know, we're filling these positions. We have great new people that are coming to us, whether they're, you know, straight out of college or whether they're somebody who is uh, a veteran teacher, maybe coming to us from another district, another state, um, you know, and, and really putting our, our resources and our, and our effort into, hey, you know, these are the things we can offer you. This is the training we can give you. Um, so let's work on ways to retain you and make sure that you, you stay with us. So when you talk about retention efforts, is this um, sign-on bonuses? Is this uh, uh, giving you competitive wages for our local states that I know we str have struggled with, seems like forever, Yeah. Um, that we lose people over the state line? Um, I work in an industry. I'm the director of the health department. So we lose people as well. We get them trained, and then they, they go on to another state or another county. County, what's the retention efforts that you're all offering the new people coming into the school system? You know, when I meet with new teachers and, I, and we bring them in, and, and you know, the reality is that we we are close to some higher paying states, um, but you know, we did receive another five percent pay raise from the, from the state this year, which we're very grateful for. You know, and then and then we we talk about some other things that maybe we offer that other states maybe you know can't offer. For example, um, this is key. For example, what would you offer that other states cannot? So we offer, you know, a, a, a housing allowance every year that um, that is now up to two thousand dollars of a housing allowance that our that our board just voted on. Um, Does everybody get that? Everybody gets that. Um, as long professional as, and non professional. As as long as you work with us um, prior to October first, as long as you're as long as you're signed on prior to October first, you do get the housing allowance. Um, there is also a, a sick leave bonus. That, that you can get, you know, for, for not using sick leave that is up to $2,000. Um, and those numbers are not built into our salary scale. So when people go onto our website and they look at our salary scale, those numbers aren't, aren't added on to our salary scale. So a lot of times what I talk to new teachers about whenever they come into orientation is, uh, you know, I say, look, you know, we have the salary scale printed for you, but, but here's some other ways that, you know, that, that we supplement that. Um, How is the housing allowance paid out, Jason? Uh, it is a, it is a, it's a, a lump sum check that you get um, usually comes around um, Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Um, it's a it's a separate payment from what is on your your normal paycheck. So it comes in between the tenth and the twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. um, is know, that looking ahead or looking backwards? 
In other words, the uh, the 2000 around uh, a Black Friday, is that projecting you'll be employed into the next year, or is that for what you have currently been employed? That's what you've currently been employed with okay. up to that time, yeah. Um, and, and then some other things that we offer that, that I wouldn't even call our, our monetary things are, are just, and I think the biggest thing is this career advancement. Um, because if, if you want to move up in our school district, and I would say I'm a product of that. When I came to Berkeley County, I was a, 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 what we call a TIS. I was a technology integration specialist, and I was working on my administration degree. Um, I was fortunate enough to get hired as an assistant principal at Musman High School. And then I was fortunate enough to get hired as a principal at Spring Mills High School. And you know now I'm working in, in human resources. So you know if you are someone that says, hey, look, you know, I, I, want, I want to teach, but maybe eventually you know, I want to get into building level administration, we always have opportunities in that area too. So there is room for professional growth. Um, and, and what we offer too is you know, we are a big school district, but I do think we offer um, a, still a hometown feel so to speak, a more personalized experience. Um, a lot of times when people call down there, and especially if they call human resources, they're going to talk to a person. Um, it's, not, it's not automated. Um, if people email us, that you know they'll get a response from us, um, which I know when you talk about some of these bigger districts, I don't know that that's always the case. So you know the things that I try to build value in are the things that I think are important to employees um, in the way of communication, um, career advancement, and maybe things that, that don't necessarily deal directly with a paycheck. You used a term a while ago, a number a while ago, 140, 141. I, I can interpret that a couple of different ways. One way I can interpret would be that is a normal turnover, around 130, 140 people. Out of that 140 people, uh, how much, how many of those do you lose from other st- to other states. Now, you've given two or three arguments of why you we should stay here in Berkeley County, but I'm sure the other school districts could make similar or comparable arguments. They can. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I mean, the fact is we do lose people to surrounding states. I, yeah. I think that's just part of being in this area. Sure. Yeah. I grew up in the other panhandle, so I can tell you even living over there, you know, the pool was very strong from Ohio and Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, and I think any time that you're a, a – a border county that you're going to deal with attrition um, to other places. And, um, you know, it's, it's not one of those situations where we can say, Hey, you know, we're just not going to lose people. It's, it's something that's going to happen. And so what we try to do in the way of recruiting is we try to prepare for that. Um, You know, we try to talk to our principals and say, Hey, how are things looking? You know, where do you think your staff might be for next year? Um, and then we try to get a plan of attack for that heading into the spring so that way we can help our principals fill these positions and make sure that we've got teachers in our classrooms. Is the turnover approximately the same as it was, say, five, six, seven, eight years or so ago, or has it improved? Or what's, this, what's the trend? It's really hard for me to say because I wasn't in this yeah. role that long ago. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I can definitely tell you whenever I was a building-level administrator that, that you felt it. Um, I... I it's just a difficult question for me to answer because I don't, I don't have the. Are there numbers? Or this, I would think there'd be numbers that would, could give you an indication what the trend is. I, I would say the trend, and I don't think it's even Berkeley County. I think the trend nationwide yeah. is that there are people leaving the teaching profession. Yeah, and I think I, it's, I think it's pretty much any profession. Yes, people. There, as you yeah. mentioned, Walga used to have thirty-year veteran educators, and now people get bored in their positions in three to five years. My I, concern, kind I, of building. I, I, I know, Bill. I understand that, but I'm looking for a little niche, a very sure. part of this. And we have been hearing for the last several years uh, that our teachers are underpaid. And we're losing them to better paid districts uh, across the state. Uh, and you've just mentioned two or three things that we have, you've done to try to stymie or to reduce this bleed into other states. My question, I guess the, the root of my question is, are these paying off? Are we, are we losing to other states at the same rate we have been in times past or have been able to short-circuit this to improve our retention? I think this year, is, and I, this is my third year doing yeah. this, yeah. I think this year has been certainly better than the first year that I was, that I was doing mm-hmm. this. I think we've seen less what I would call resignations of people that say, hey, I'm going to you know, X state, X county to sure. work. It does still happen. Um, 
and and I don't know, you know, it's it's difficult to compete sometimes with the numbers that these counties throw up mm-hmm. on a billboard. Mm-hmm. How are we with an inter-county transfers are, that we compete with neighboring counties, not necessarily neighboring states, what Bill is saying, yeah. and I understand that because you're in a whole different tax bracket, you're in a whole different state funded when you go to different states but within our own state how are we with inner county yeah we don't we don't often lose very many staff members to to other west virginia counties um as a matter of fact this year we've actually seen i i would say more people coming over and, it, and it's not a, a large number but we have seen a little bit of a trend of people coming to us from some other parts of the state upshire county wood county places that truly are eliminating positions because the population is is declining there um, we have seen more what I would call out of county but in state um, applications from people that are not quote unquote local um, and I do think word is spreading uh, about the the growth over here you know I can tell you from growing up in a different part of the panhandle um, or a different panhandle than this one sometimes whenever we talked about over home I remember my junior year we were playing Jefferson in the state baseball tournament and we felt like Jefferson was on the moon whenever we looked at it <laughs> you know on, yeah. on the map because we were like where is this place and, and you're like man it's way 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 over there you got to go out of the state two three times before you get to this <laughs> you part do. of the state and and so um but I do think the recent trend I do think people are starting to notice the growth over here I'm in other parts of the state, and and when I go to conferences and I talk to other, you know, HR directors from other you know other counties in the state, um, you know, they're completely blown away by the growth that that we're seeing. Are we Can over twenty thousand students now? Uh, I believe we just crossed the twenty thousand threshold, like at the end of last year. Yes, sir. Can we talk a little bit about and and I see this during the school year, and it, and I don't have a child that's in the school system. I'm, will be some year down the road a grandchild that's in but uh, it's disheartening when you hear about all the bus drivers Mm -hmm. the bus routes that have canceled because they don't have their driver their routine driver or a sub to fill in what are you all doing about that well eric's done a great job of the transportation department and i can tell you as of today we are we are completely filled up on runs for next week so there will there will not be any first week of school you're not going to have bus routes canceled we're not going to have bus routes canceled next week we we we're going to have everything everything covered um we have 30 bus drivers in training right now which is a which is a great number because those people can um fill in maybe routes that we are going to need coverage on and our bus drivers i I gotta again tip my hat to them they do a wonderful job of hey can you pick up this extra run we need to pick kids up and get them to school our bus drivers are always willing to do that but we do have 30 bus drivers in training that will um, ease the burden on our current bus drivers but also potentially give us substitute bus drivers on days when maybe our bus drivers you have to call out sick for some reason and can't make their run now, um, as I remember from last year, at this point last year, we were short substantial number of bus drivers. So it's really turned around from being deficit last year to perhaps some surplus this year. So they do a, they do a bus driver recruitment um, event yeah. where they have people come and drive a bus. Um, and I can tell you that Karen and Lee Dora as well, they, they really beat the bush, uh, bushes on social media to try yeah. to get out there mm-hmm. like, hey, these are the open positions we have for, for service, mm-hmm. yeah. um, which, you know, bus drivers would fall under that category. Um, you know, and, and Eric Kiesecker in our transportation department, they, they really have, they've done a great job of, of getting people in the door. They're working on getting bus drivers trained right now because, you know, we don't, we don't want to put the burden on parents and say, hey, you, you know, we can't have a bus run today you know you're gonna to have to bring your child to school or find transportation there's been a lot of that the last couple of years and we yeah. don't want that you know the the best place for a child um is in school we mm-hmm. know that we want kids in school we want to be able to get them there so so we can get them you know what they need from us so um you know a major point of emphasis for us is, is saying hey let's make sure these these bus routes get covered for sure jason the tenor or the tone that we've been hearing for the last few years is because of pressure a lot beyond our control because of the uh, uh, the the attractiveness of the, uh, the other states and in fact we do not pay as much uh, there's been a real challenge on getting the professional staff but what I'm hearing from you today is a much more optimistic message than what I've been hearing in the last two or three years you know I'm a, I'm a glass half full kind of yeah. guy um, if if you come in my office and 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 but I'll you know and I'll be frank with you too. I mean I you know I won't back down from the challenges that we have over here because they are unique. Um, but I also think it's an exciting time to be in Berkeley sure. County. Okay. Um, you know I I came back here from Virginia because I'm I'm a West Virginia boy, mm-hmm. 
And that's important to me. And it's important that I am in my home state to help the kids in my home state achieve the way that they need to achieve. And so when I'm talking to people about why do you need to teach or why should you teach in Berkeley County, that's what I'm looking at is, hey, I'm West Virginia born and raised, um, and, and I want good people around our kids that are also you know, willing to help them, and that's what we need. So. It's not because these teachers are getting battle pay for taking <laughs> no, care of these children coming in. No, sir. Jason, hang out. We've got a final minute coming up right after we do our final break. Mm-hmm. 